Accustats Video Productions presents from the Executive West Hotel in Louisville, Kentucky, the 2002 Derby City Classic. Along with Danny DiLiberto, I'm Bill in Cardona, and this is round four action, Danny. The two players playing against one another is Steve, uh, Evgeny, Evgeny Steleve. I keep wanting to put his last name first. Evgeny Steleve. His opponent, Rodney Morris. Uh, this is round four action. 200, I believe 230 players started this event. There were only 80 some odd players left. This is going to be a pretty interesting matchup, wouldn't you say? Oh, I'll say, especially, you know, uh, Rodney's been away a while, you know, and uh, he's playing very well. It's almost like he didn't leave at all, you know. And, of course, the Russian is like the hottest young thing from Asia. Yeah, well, anyways, I saw I saw the Russian Salib play one pocket yesterday. Uh, great shot, Megger handles the cue ball really nicely, but uh, his judgment a little bit questionable. Okay, <laughs> but of course that's one pocket. Nine ball is a much different game. You know, we all know how to play nine ball. Oh, of course it's pool by number. You you make the one, then the two, then the th you know it's pretty simple for the public to follow. That's that's why it's the most popular game. I kind of like eight ball, but that's neither here nor there. Anyways, I think we're going to have a real interesting matchup with, with Morris and Staleev. So we're going to work, work our way to the booth. And uh, they're almost ready to start the action down there in the pit. And we'll be right back with you guys. All right, let's get it on. Okay, uh, unlike most other tournaments, nine ball tournaments, uh, the way the balls will be racked for this event is instead of the one ball being on the on the foot spot, the nine ball will be racked on the foot spot, and uh, that's for our, that's for the Akistat table only. Yeah, it's uh, and also you know that means that three balls will be over the uh, foot string. And I'm glad you mentioned three balls because I think that the the rules that are implemented into this tournament playing nine ball is at least three balls must pass the side pocket. Is that uh, correct? Yeah, that's that's what they tell me. That, uh, you know, uh, to be a legal break, three balls must go past the uh, center of the table. Now, I don't know what the punishment is if it doesn't. And what if three balls hit points and go inside pockets or something? I mean, does that make it legal? I mean, does that mean you have to pocket balls and have three balls go past? I don't know what the punishment is if it doesn't. We're going to find out. And also, one, well, two, there's three, no four. There's no problem no, there. Right. And also, <laughs> it's difficult at times to interpret, like you say, if or if not three balls did go past the center of the table. In that particular break, there's no question. Okay, what I'm trying to find out is what happens if three balls don't go past. What if you make two balls, but three balls don't go past? Uh, past the side pocket. Well, I don't think we'll have to worry about that, Danny. In okay, the meantime, I just was curious. In the meantime, Evgeny at the table with a very nice layout. He should come around uh, to uh, about a quarter of the way cross table after hitting the two between the cue ball and where the eight ball is now, I would believe. Or he's going three cushions around. Three cushions around. Three cushions. Now that shot plays much better, providing that you can pocket the ball, because now you're going into the angle that you want to end up on the three, instead of away from it. And you're getting close to it. And you're getting closer to it, like you've been trying to get close to me lately. I've noticed that. I don't know what that means, Billy. Uh, I know you've been trying <laughs> to ask me a couple questions and stuff about how I play the game and stuff like that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I know how you play the game. But <laughs> I mean, I've been playing with you now over 30 years. I think I know how you play. Oh, that brings me. Oh, but uh, after he uh, leaves the table, I'm going to mention a little something that you and I discussed at breakfast this morning. Anyways, he's a little out of line here, Danny. He's yeah, going to have to do a little extra traveling with the cue ball. He's very funny, and not only that is where the seven is and the eight. I don't think that was the right way to fall on the ball. I mean, if. He would have had a lot more to do if he made the six. Yeah, that particular run out, exactly what Danny said, considering how the balls are positioned determines how much emphasis you should put on certain shots. The key in that particular run out was the right angle on the six to get the right angle on the seven to drop cross table for the eight. So therefore, it was really imperative that he had the right angle on the six 
to start it. Exactly. You, you have to fall on an angle for an angle so that when you make the ball, you automatically go to the next ball. He didn't do that very well. Well, he doesn't want to get exactly straight in, and I think he got a little bit angled so that he can make the ball and get off the rail. You don't want to have to shoot that nine from the cushion, no matter how close you are. Now, he got a perfect angle to get off the rail. He's a really a smooth player, by the way, you know? Yeah. And he's got a lot of power in his broke. He's got a in his break, and he's got a powerful stroke, and he's got a lot of heart. This game number one goes to Roddy Morris, and he takes the early lead in the short race to seven, one game to zero. Now, getting back to what Danny said about knowing how I play, he's known me, and he saw, he's been watching me play for 30 years. Now, 30 years was a, a number you threw up at the, re or I I threw up at the restaurant it's more than this that. morning. It's probably more than that. It's right. more than that. Yeah. I said, Danny, I make better sauce than you. We had an argument who made better sauce. You know. Well, how can we spaghetti. tell that without uh, tasters, Billy? Okay, you, you can't say yours Danny, is better. Danny, would you please let Wait me finish? A yeah, please go let me ahead, finish, okay? Billy. Uh, thank you. Okay, I heard this you. all at breakfast. No, but but the other, everyone else did. Okay, let's hear this. Billy makes so, the best uh, sauce. No, 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 Danny. Danny. So Danny said, well, you must have just learned to make sauce because we were on the road 30 years ago. You didn't know how to cook then. In 30 years, you can learn to do a lot of things, Danny. Okay? Would you agree? <laughs> you didn't learn a lot of things. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, well, Danny. Okay, here comes the break. Uh, he does have a solid break. You notice the cue ball didn't fly around. He controlled the cue ball. He's got position for the one, and uh, it looks like if he falls on the two, this could be over. Well, it looks like the one to the two is really the, the, the answer to this particular rack because notice the three in front of the upper right-hand corner, the four near the right-hand side, all the balls are open quite nicely, but the one a little bit flat, so he's going to have to hit this shot cleanly and with a little speed. Yeah, I like to tell people that there's one shot usually in a nine-ball rack that if you execute properly, the rest of the rack is easy. Now, that was it. And he would like to end up exactly where the cue ball is now for the three. And he did that pretty nicely. Now, now he, he automatically goes one rail under the five, and he has the four in the side. Or is he going to go two? He went two. You know why he went two? Because that eliminates having to roll the ball. You know, a lot of players like to hit it with authority. So he went a little greater distance, but that meant he could shoot a right. little more. Which in a little harder. Which in turn increases the accuracy of the shot. Right. And, and that's, that's the most important thing when you're at the table, staying at the table. Missing balls, you don't stay at the you, table. You see what he did here? You know, uh, uh, inexperienced players would just get up and get position for the six and then worry how to get on the eight. But he got the perfect angle on the six to go to the eight. And that's definitely not accidental. And he's going to have a similar layout here. Boy, he's the type of a player that uh, really, really knows how to concentrate. He's really focused out there. And I'm watching him as he walks around the table, Danny. His eyes are on nothing but what's happening at the table. And it's, his eyes never wander. He never looks at his opponent, never looks at the spectators. It's always on the table, you know. And that tells me that he's focusing and concentrating 100% on business at hand. Yeah, and he focuses and concentrates pretty quick. He, you know, that was a fast rack. I don't think it took a minute and a half to get out there. No, he's really a natural player, you know. He's, uh, he knows exactly what he needs to do, and he wastes no time in doing it. And he, but he's not really hasty, you know. I think that, uh, you know, he, he's thinking as he's playing, because I'm watching him. And he's from Hawaii, and he's wearing a Hawaiian shirt, if you notice. He made the one. He is far away on the two and this would be fine if the four were like hanging in a pocket where he has to do nothing but he has to do more than make the two well it looks like danny that he does have a little bit of an angle now it looks like he'll cut the two ball slightly to the left which in turn the cue ball should come this way and then up maybe this way he's going to have to hit this shot really well the cue ball may end up hitting the nine here and if that happens he's got a problem 
Well, uh, the biggest problem of the shot, as far as I'm concerned, you notice he's almost frozen to the rail. The biggest part of the shot is making the ball. I think if you make the ball, you go to the floor automatically, but the shot is tough. Well, here's another option, okay? Since he's at quite a distance from the two ball, and it's since he has to hit it pure, and then, and then come up with a good position on the floor, maybe he's better off crossing the two, setting the cue ball down here and down here. Or if he, yeah, look at that shot. Look at that shot. Now, he still has something to do because he would have liked to get straight in on the four. Uh, if he got straight in, it would have, it would have had uh, automatic position to the five. Now he has to do something a little spectacular here. I mean, he might, I don't know if he has room to draw the ball between the six and eight and not hit anything. He has obstructions here. Anyway, this is, this is not a gimme. But I, I think what he really needs to do, he needs to hit the four ball with some speed, with a low ball. In the event that he's able to go in between the six and the eight, he'll have enough speed. Even if he hits the eight off the, off the other rail, like so, he'll have enough Beautiful. speed to get away from the five. He made that look easy. It was no problem at all. Very nicely executed shot. I like playing the position for the corner here. And he tried to do that. Well, I don't know what he tried to do. I like playing for the corner because playing position for the seven becomes much easier if you play position for the corner. Well, unlike uh, uh, Steleve's layout, he could play the seven in the far corner because of where the eight is. There's nothing to do but make the seven. And the eight is near the pocket. St uh, Steleve had something to do where the eight was laying off the seven. This is just automatic. Make the ball and you're out. Well, he's making it all look easy. I mean, he's prepared to play, isn't he? It, well, it, absolutely. I noticed that uh, in, in rack number one, when he, when he got to the table, everything he hit was really cleanly hit, as the two was his opening shot in rack number two. Very oh, difficult shot this. hitting the center of the pocket. And he can shoot both hands. You know, that's so important now there. If he had to reach it left-handed, he would have been over the top of the nine, stretching. Very, very important for you people beginning to play both hands. He really gets down well over the balls. Well, you know, um, Steleve has been traveling around our country and making games and gambling and all that. I think after he catches this act, I don't think he'll be going to Hawaii to play this guy. Well, this guy also plays in other cities as well. And how do you know that shirt is a Hawaiian shirt? It might be from Florida. I, it has I'm palm guessing, trees. You know, you're right. You know. you know, it could very well be it. But being that he's from Hawaii, I have to guess that it, it's an Hawaiian shirt that he bought in Hawaii. I see. Yeah, but well, the, but the, would you, what would you bet on? Hawaii or Florida? Oh, uh, I don't know. I think I might bet on uh, Hawaii. Could be South Carolina, too. <laughs> Billy. <laughs> okay. Once again, watch his break. A lot of velocity into his break, hitting the one ball very squarely, and the indication and look of at that. This. An indication Take of your that. Places. An indication of that is the one is the cue ball after hitting the one ball went straight back. If he ha hits the one ball on either side, the cue ball will then go to one side or the other side of the table. That's not what happened. It went straight back, indicating a square hit on the one ball. Now, if he gets on the three, it looks again like a, an easy out, and that's the ball to get to. Is he gonna roll forward and take the cut on the three? Nothing wrong with that, because uh, he can get to the four on the side from that angle. Yeah, that's, he, that's, the best, that's the best path, because yeah. playing position for the three with a straight in angle creates problems for him on subsequent shots, like the four. He might not even be able to get position on the four. And the three ball will play much more difficult. I think just, just accepting what the table offers this time, just playing for the angle and cutting it in is his best route. Yeah, he wants to be as close to the three without being snookered. And he did look at this to see if the three went down the far uh, corner because he, he had a little funny angle on the two, and he got pretty good on this. Now, he has an option, Danny. And from the way he was addressing this shot, it looks like he's playing a safety here. I don't, I don't think he's that type of a player. But uh, he's really not really comfortable with this shot. This is the, he's showing a little different expression on his face. He's like, kind of like whistling here or something. He's going to shoot it. He's not going to play safe. Well, look, look at the, the control of the cue well, ball. Absolutely perfect. 
he couldn't have put it with his hand any better. But now he'd like to go a little bit forward, get an angle on the five like that to get to the six. That's what the whole game of nine ball is about. Leave an angle on the ball you're shooting that will automatically get you to the next ball. And then uh, you need an angle on the next ball to get to the next ball. And that's what it comes to, like threes. You need an angle for an angle for an angle. And he, he did all that. He's got a little bit of work to do here. Now on the six ball, I thought perhaps he would have been better off Ending, ending up straight in on the sixth round, he's straight back. He would have liked to end it up there. Now he's got a little bit of an awkward angle. He's got to play it for the short yeah. side of the table. Since the eight ball was on this side of the table, more so than on the other side, yeah. we refer to this as the short side of the table. And at times it's more difficult to play position on a ball that's positioned on the short side. Well, he had no trouble doing this. And what, this is four, isn't it? Are you running four wrecks? This is gonna be four nothing already. So he certainly has come to play. Like Danny said, he's been away from, from the game for a while, but nevertheless, when he came back, he looked like he never left at all. That's exactly right. Yeah. So he's run three and a half racks. He uh, stepped right. to the table with four balls remaining in the first rack, ran them off, and has run three consecutive racks after that. So therefore, he's been at the table now for three and a half racks. Uh, Evgeny is in the chair watching all this, and if he gets another oh. opportunity at the table, I'm kind of curious to see how he'll respond. You know what? Uh, he's not even watching this, uh, Steve. He's looking out at the room watching everything else. I think he wants someone to say, your shot. He doesn't want to watch, see what happens. This guy keeps making a ball on the break and running out. One, One in the side again. Position for the two, but I think the three and eight are going to get difficult. So, But the eight ball, Danny, ended up about a quarter of an inch off that side rail, the three right in front of it. Uh, that looks like a pretty easy combination, providing he can reposition the cue ball in a reasonable line for the combination. Yeah, he got, he got really uh, funny on the two. He, if he had another couple inch angle, then it would have been nothing to pocket it. But now he's sort of straight, and he, I, don't, I can't see him getting a real good angle 3-8, unless he goes forward two rails. Now this type of a shot will tell the story on how well prepared he is. This is the type of a shot that demands accuracy and speed, and if he hits it pure, pure, you know that he's definitely ready to play, but yet you should, you should know that by now anyways. Yeah. But I think he's gonna pocket it with speed. Okay. He's taking the shot. He decided I'll just I'll just cinch this two and take the shot in the eight because if I make it, the cue ball is going to go cross side and back, uh, and he'll have position for the for the three. You know, I don't, uh, it's not natural by any means. The position of the seven it could be an interfering ball when he steps back to the table. It's in a real difficult position. The seven that is, and also the cue ball. He's gonna you know he's gonna have to do a lot of work and he's gonna have to hit this accurately to get position. Well, he didn't, but you know, he didn't really sell out a shot. So he has this, I mean, uh, Stalieve has this basic safety, bank the three to the end rail where he's standing and try to leave the cue ball down at that end. I mean, I like that. I mean, he's looking at other things. Maybe he wants to try to go behind the eight. Okay, use the, the, seven. the other shot he has is to bank the three in this area, repositioning the cue ball there. Very, very easy shot to lose the speed of the cue ball with, but very effective if you're able to control it. Right. He definitely, but anyway, he's been sitting there a while. Now his first shot is a safety. He decided to use the seven and four to get him with, and I don't know, he might have left the window here. It looks like he has left the window, at least from our vantage point, Danny. It appears to me, at least, that he's left the window. And if he did leave the window, running these balls should be no problem for Morris, especially when you consider how well he's playing. Yeah. Yeah, that was a little unlucky. Uh, you know, he had to leave it perfect, and he did. But uh, his shot was not a bad shot, even though it didn't work out for him. He had a lot of interfering balls with the seven. Well, you know, it's a, it's a little tough to function when you've been sitting there four racks waiting for a shot, and then the, the guy finally leaves you a shot, and it's a safe. That's no way to gain four games. 
Uh, does Roddy have a loss in this event? Does anyone know that? I don't think he does. 230 players came from different parts of the world. Ralph Souquet from Germany. You know, I mean, yeah. from different parts of the world. I mean, I asked Ralph, I said, did you fly in from Germany just to play in this event? He said, yes, I did. I said, well, that's something there, you know. I, I said, uh, glad to have you here, Ralph. I, I, there's a lot of quality players in this event. I'm talking about, I, I, I'd venture to say, there's w with the absence of Reyes and Bustamante, every other strong player in the world is here. Oh, you're right. You're absolutely right. Th this is a good feel. Earl Strickland is here. Nick Varner is Johnny here. Johnny Archer. And he's playing well. Corey Dool. Yeah. Rodney Morris. And Shannon Dalton came Shannon all the way Dalton. from Kentucky to play here. All the way from another another ball pocketed on the break. But in this position. time, this time, one ball finally coming to a halt right in front of the corner pocket. Two ball just about on in the same position as in just and in, in every rack he's been breaking along that left hand side. I, I see no nothing stopping him here. Position from the three to the four looks like the only thing that may that may be a slight problem. Oh, well, F. Guinea may not be liking this game as much as he did a week ago. You know, <laughs> he's a, a good practice here would be to stay. Do not take this route because you're safe all the way here. You know, just take the one rail route. Stay on that side of the eight ball. That's, that's what, the shot. That's what he did. You you. And that's a good uh, thing you pointed out, Billy. If you got choices in routes to go from the cue ball to the object ball, take the route that you're least amount snuckered in the path. I mean, look at this. I mean, he's making it look like he's practicing. You know, he just gets up, one stroke, bap. Perfect. And he's making it look like he's practicing very well. Right? <laughs> Doesn't it look like he's just <laughs> knocking him around? He's so loose and confident. Oh, boy, I wish I could play like that. I wish my demeanor you was did, like that. Though. Oh, I wish it was like mm -hmm. that. 72. I would, give, oh, oh. I would give almost anything to be able to play like this man right here. Billy. It's so much fun. You played so like that fun. in 72, Billy. Danny, I'm not living in the past. you got to move with the times. Okay? I know, but in other you words, you got to move, Danny. You had your moments, Billy. So, you know, now it's his turn to have his moments. You're not, an old goat. I'm not, I'm not begrudging anyone. You're missing the point. I'm saying I wish I could play oh, like I that. Oh, I know. I know. You know? I just don't want you to feel too bad about it because I'm pointing out that you did have I don't your days. I don't feel bad. I feel, I feel like, you know, I, I had my time, like you say, you yeah. know. But I wish I could I have it one more well, time. So do I, but, you know. That's life. Uh oh, cue ball, watch out. Okay, the one ball hit the point of the side pocket. And had it not hit the point, he probably would have run out. If he had a shot. Now we're going to have a rare, rare push after the break. This is the first time this has come into play. Unless he could see it. Now he's looking to do something. He wants to shoot. He doesn't want to be pushing. and But he's going to have to. And you know what? I like the trick push. Push this cue ball. Push this cue ball over here, and then see what your opponent does. And if he, that's what he's doing, sort of. Well, he left an edge of it. I wouldn't have left an edge. I just would have put it there and then tried to kick behind it. Now, this is uh, Steleve's second shot, and he's got another safe. I like, yeah, I like, I like shooting the one ball here, cue ball here. That way, there's a lot of good things that can happen for him. Like that. Did he leave the window again? He's looking. This will be something if he left the edge of the one pocket because that's just what he did with the other safe. You know, tough to be losing five nothing and, and you get up and you're playing safes. It looks like he has a shot because he glanced at the position of the two, which is an indication that he wants to play position. Yeah. So where is the two and where do I need to get? No. It's a six nothing advantage, and if he runs the balls on the table, the match will then be over. Uh oh, first ball he missed. And he took his eye off the ball because he put more emphasis on controlling the cue ball. 
playing position in front of the three instead of going around it, yeah, which I don't have any problem with him shooting it like that because I probably would have shot it like that myself, but he did take his eye off the two ball. And the, and the match would have been over, I would guess, if he would have made that. Well, anyway, uh, Evgeny finally gets a chance to run out. He better take advantage because there's not going to be many chances. No, there isn't. And getting back to Rodney Morris, you know, he entered a, at an event in, 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 the, uh, in the Sands Hotel in Reno, Nevada, after being away from the game for quite some time. And it was like he just never left. He won the event. He and did. Yeah, I didn't he know won that the event. One. Yeah. So therefore, it's, qu it's, it's, it's quite clear, you know, why he won the event because he never misses a ball just about he s he seems so comfortable doing what he's doing oh. well the only way he can go a little astray here is to get straight in on the six and it looked like he did that he might have a little angle to get off the rail or he looks like he's winding up to draw it one rail you know uh, that was a little careless you must leave an angle on the six to get to the eight I still think he's better off going forward. Drawing this ball one cushion and back out, you know, well, he, he's going forward. He's just taking the shot. Yeah. He would like to be a little easier than this. This is not a gimme, especially when you're getting shut out and it's near the end. Playing the nine in the same pocket increases the accuracy of the shot of the eight. Except, like I said, you want an easier shot than that. And uh, like I say, F. Guinea may not be liking this game as much as he used to. Yeah, when you're running out, you want to have an easier shot on the eight than he did. And he got punished. Well, Rodney got on what I call the 50-yard line. I imagine he'll make the ball, but he did get out of line. One of the rare times so far he got out of line. He, he's got his choice. He could shoot it in either pocket. It looks like everything is dead in line, straight up and down the table. And he made that. And the match is over that quick. And it was painless for F. Guinea. Well, Rodney really only made one error in the match, and that was missing the two ball. Other than that, he played flawlessly. Great match. <coughs> We're going to get the stats on the, on the screen. 9.30 he shot. That's pretty good. <coughs> he missed the two ball. Uh, hold on, we're going to do an interview with uh, Rodney. We're here with Rodney Morris. Uh, Rodney, congratulations in your match against uh, Steve. Thank you. And uh, you really, really played well. Just the other day, uh, you came up to me and said, listen, I like to play on the Akistats table. You know, I play pretty good. I never had my doubts <laughs> about that, Roddy. You know that. <laughs> and it seems like when you're under the spotlight, you, it just brings the best out of you. Yeah, well, I just try to, you know, perform well because I know there's a lot of people watching. So, you know, it's more of a pride thing than anything, you know. So I try to, you know, not embarrass myself out there. <laughs> well, you can uh, rest assured you certainly didn't embarrass yourself. If anyone was embarrassed, it was your opponent. <laughs> not because he played poorly. Mm -hmm. It's because, well, he just really never had much of an opportunity. And the few times he did have an opportunity, he was a little bit weak. But what you put on somebody could weaken a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. I try to just charge them when they make a mistake. You know, that's the key right there because it, it magnifies their mistake and hopefully it puts them in a bad frame of mind. You were you seemed so comfortable when you were at the table. How do you get yourself in that mindset of uh, just feeling so comfortable? And it showed in, in reflecting in the way you were walking around the table. And well, everything. I just try to uh, you know play within myself. You know, not worry about the surroundings or what's going on. I just try to concentrate on what I'm doing, not worrying about what they're doing, because you know it's you know you got to concentrate on your game. If you're worrying about what the other guy's doing, then you're not going to execute properly. That's exactly the point that I brought up to Danny in the booth. I said, look at him. I've been watching him as he walks around the table. Never at one time is his eyes wandering on his opponent, the spectators in the stand. He's focusing and concentrating solely on his business at hand. And that's exactly what you were doing, and it really shows in the way you played. Yeah, there's plenty of time after, you know, to sign autographs and cheer and all of that. So try not to do that during the match. Okay, you, uh, you made only two errors.
error, shooting a 930 uh, with the stats. That's a real high average. And let's talk a little bit about what you did wrong. You know, not not much to talk about, but mm -hmm. let's talk about it anyways. Uh, you played position on the three ball for a three eight combination only because you were at a distance from the two, and you had a flat angle on the two. So therefore, it was really not adv advisable for you to try to get good position on the three eight. What was going through your mind when you were confronted with that type of a situation? Well, first of all, it was a score. The score dictated me, you know, shooting that shot. You know, if I was down, I probably would have played safe on the two, not even tried it. But I figured the play table was playing good. I was getting the rolls. So I said, you know, if I hit them good, I make it, I win. And I really, you know, stick the dagger in them. Okay, well, that particular shot, you or anyone else didn't figure the pocket. Difficult shot. Mm -hmm. But the one shot you missed that surprised me was the two ball. Yeah. Oh, at the end of the yeah, that that was. Uh, I just took my eye off. I got careless. You know, I kind of you know lost focus for a minute, and uh, I didn't bear down on the shot. You know? Well, you don't get careless enough for mm -hmm. some people. Of course, for yourself, you get careless too often. Mm -hmm. But for other players that are playing you, you don't get careless enough. Mm -hmm. And if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. seven zero, that's pretty <laughs> strong. Oh, well, he helped me out a little <laughs> bit there. <laughs> Anyways, it's, it's really great to see you back playing again. It looks like you never took off at all, and that really puzzled me. How can a guy leave the game for several several years and then come back and just play as strong as you did? I don't know how that happened. You're just a tremendously strong, natural player. I uh, appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot for stopping up and joining us here at Akistats. Right. And uh, good luck for the men of the tournament. Right All right, now. it's my pleasure. <laughs> All right, you people out there that have supported Akistats, give Pat a call. 800-828-0397.